Hi, my name is Katie Hector. I am a curatorial intern here at the Alpha Art Gallery. I'm here today interviewing Michael Fenton. He is one of the artists participating in the MSHAC Summer Pavilion Show here at the gallery, and he is also the president of the MSHAC Association. So I'm going to start off by thanking you for coming for the interview. Pleasure. Uh, I'm going to start with the first question. Um, first, I want you to tell a little bit about your background, where you came from in terms of your career, and then transitioning, how did you come to art and participate in practicing art? Uh, it's a simple question, a complex answer. Um, when I was, well, I was a kid, when I was in high school, I always liked to draw. Uh, and whenever there was an opportunity to draw, and in fact, I was in the performing arts for a while as well at that stage, um, I enjoyed it. I went to college and uh, I, I was an accounting major and a marketing major. And um, after the military, I went and I worked for AT&T uh, and I did accounting and whatnot, uh, spent most of my career in human resources. During all of that period of time, uh, in college and otherwise, whenever there was an opportunity to do something art-related, mm -hmm. perform or do visual art, I, I, I kind of did it, but not seriously. So in, in college, uh, as a business major, uh, I was the editor of the yearbook for two years and one of the editors of the College Humor magazine, uh, which gave me an opportunity um, to do graphic art kind of stuff. I would every once in a while dabble in painting, usually acrylics, um, but I always liked to draw. Then I go through a 30 plus year career, mostly with AT&T and the some of the offshoot companies, and I didn't do much mm -hmm. in terms of visual art. But when I retired, it was around my birthday, mm -hmm. and it was, uh, well, after, after my career. And, and my wife, my present was a whole new set of paints and a new easel and brushes and everything. And, I think my wife's motivation was, no, you do this and stay out from underfoot. <laughs> um, but she also knew I liked to do that. And, and in any event, I picked up the brush and then something happened. Mm -hmm. I believe art cures, it has healing properties. I had the last 10 years of my career at AT&T, I was in in charge or participated in implementing what I call a corporate death sentence on employees. Mm -hmm. I was laying off people for 10 years. People who did nothing but do their best at their jobs and I was laying them off. After 10 years of doing this, I had pains in my body that were so bad. And the more I paint, I realized that the act of painting not the finished product, mm -hmm. but just the act of doing it has healing properties. If you've got a passion in life, whether it's playing the saxophone, or painting a picture, or playing golf, or acting, or writing poetry, do it. And don't stop doing it because you've got a career. In terms of your work, what kind of inspirations do you have, maybe on a daily basis, but maybe overall as well? Um, Inspirations that drive your work? At first, my inspiration was, let me see if I can do it. It's just, it's like hitting a golf ball and saying, can I get it in the hole? Mm -hmm. um, so can I make a picture that looks like a picture? And can I do something that somebody's going to look at and go, hey, cool. Mm -hmm. and that goes away pretty quick. And then you begin to get ideas from different things. And I get ideas from people's faces. Mm -hmm. And the older the face, and the more wrinkled the face, and the more unusual the face, the more interesting it is. Mm -hmm. So that, I get inspiration from that. I've gone through a number of stages where it's, uh, I try to tell a story. So if I, I see something or think of something, it's how can I put that on a canvas that tells a story. I guess the, my main question is, who are the subjects that you've chosen to paint? 
Um, well, I can give you the, the real name of one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll start with the one I can't identify. This is a photograph taken by a friend right here. Mm -hmm. um, in, he said it was taken in Cuba, uh, the original photograph. I'm not sure if it's Cuba or some other place in the Caribbean, but it, it was a black and white photo of a wall with a window that looked for the, pretty much like that. Mm -hmm. But there's this woman looking out of this, almost looked like a bombed out building, and she's holding a chicken, a rooster, or whatever, you know. And, I'm, and she's got this look on her face, like, who are you looking at, Jack, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and I'm thinking, the first thought I had is she's, she's like one of these Obadiah women that uh, cast spells, or maybe she, what's she gonna do with that chicken? Mm -hmm. Is that supper, or is that some kind of, you know, oh, yeah, right. is that some kind of vo voodoo thing? I, I, I didn't really know. But I wanted to catch that mystery. I wanted to catch the kind of dilapidation of the side of the building. Um, I, I, the graffiti is stuff that I, I added. Um, that building had some political graffiti, but I couldn't really make it out from the photograph. So I, but that was what I was kind of doing. I was just trying to catch that that moment in time where you look up and you see this woman with her chicken looking down at you and it's like, what's the story there? This is a person in my life. Um, when I was little, five, six years old, um, my grandmother had a, a rooming house in Saratoga Springs, New York. And it, it was a big, big, fairly big rooming house and she had a woman named Ruth, who was her, like a foreman. I mean, she did, she sort of ran at the house on a day-to-day -day basis. She, mm -hmm. she cooked meals, she, she was in charge of the kitchen. Um, she supervised uh, the, uh, whoever it was that was like making beds and doing that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and she took care of me whenever I was left with my grandmother. Uh, Ruth was sort of the overseer of me. When I was a kid, I played in the yard. And at the end of the yard was the house. And whenever I looked up at the porch and at the doorway, there was Ruth standing in the door uh, behind the screen watching me play to make sure I was OK. And when you're five years old and you're alone in the big yard, uh, it's kind of cool to look up there and see that there's the safety factor. There's Ruth. She, she, you know, she's there. I feel safe. Uh, uh, and, and I always remembered her in the doorway. And when I saw a picture that was very similar to what I remembered, I just had to start putting the pieces together and, uh, and, and paint, paint what I remember. I tend to play around. I, I've done abstract and I just don't enjoy doing abstract and I don't like, I do a couple of landscapes but I don't, it's just not fun to do. Mm -hmm. So I, I play around, I'm very eclectic and yet people can recognize my work, I'm told. So I'm gonna ask you if you wanna say a little bit about MSHAC's mission. Um, yeah, yeah MSHAC, uh, which uh, is uh, uh, the acronym for the Milburn Short Hills Art Center. Mm -hmm was an organization started around 1940 um, and it was mostly people from the Milburn Short Hills area. Mm -hmm. um, it has evolved so now that about 15% of our members are from there and the rest are from all, all over North Central Jersey. Um, but we have members from New York, we got I guess a couple from Florida and Pennsylvania. Um, Membership ranges from about 130 to 180 a year, mm -hmm. and that's just a whimsical kind of a number. It just happens to be that way. We have amateurs, we have professionals, we have people who teach art, we have people who just dabble. Mm -hmm. We have sort of evolved into an organization that has between three and five um, exhibitions a year. Mm -hmm. And we uh, like to have them in venues like theaters, galleries. Um, um, we, we tend to move toward the more uh, upscale c c 
kinds of environments when we can. Um, we want to give our, our members an opportunity to show their work. And we find that our members don't like to attend meetings that much. Uh, they, they, they just want to show their work. Yeah. Um, what I found when I started painting is I knew I needed to get in touch with other artists. And I went to a number of art associations. And I found that MSHAC was the only one that I went to that did, made me feel welcome. Mm -hmm. that I wasn't viewed as a competitor, yeah. but just a fellow artist. So I joined, and then after a while they asked if I wanted to be on the board, and then I got to be president, and I've been president for too long. <laughs> um, and and uh, uh, But it, it's a great organization, and the people in it are, are wonderful. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you need, if I get stuck, on something, I can call up any number of people. And people, uh, a number of people will send me emails and say, here's a piece I'm working on. What do you think, or what do you think about this, or what do you think about that? Mm -hmm. And we got photographers, and we got sculptors, and we got um, collagists, and you know, and then you can see from this exhibit, we got a little bit of everything. And people ask advice, they share willingly, and it's, if there's competition, it's only when we have a show and, you know, uh, some people get awards and some people don't. But you get a chance to talk about it and share it. And, and uh, uh, so it's, it's kind of fun. I want to take this opportunity to, to thank Alpha for the, uh, uh, having MSHAC here this year and for inviting us back again to have a show sometime next year. Uh, it's an opportunity for our members to have a show in a, uh, a, a cool gallery, uh, in a real gallery setting. And uh, so we look forward to it. We don't have the exact dates, but we will be back. Thank you.